Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. You want to go where people know troubles are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. The lyrics to that song are actually really weird. I think it was, well, it was for a musical that didn't get made. Cheers, man. That was like a sitcom that was on for forever. I think nine seasons or something. Cheers was on for 11 seasons when I was a kid. I remember being on TV all the time. That song, that opening sequence with the wood cuts and the slow pushes, I love it. It's like such nostalgia for me. It is like a pocket full of Werther's Originals. It was Werther's Original, and I was just a boy. It's just something about it just takes me back in time to a simpler time and a place when I was a a young fella. Pepperidge Farm remembers. We're going to look right uh, away at season six, episode one, which is a crazy episode. That kind of reinvents the show. Um, for the first five seasons, there's a character called Diane, played by Shelley Long. She is sort of a love interest to Sam Malone. Sam Malone owns the bar of Cheers. Uh, he is sort of um, he's a baseball player who's fallen from grace, and now he's got this bar. She is introduced to the series as a college student who is being abandoned by her older professor love interest fiance at the bar. What's his name? Something like, he's got some ridiculous name, like Smollett Washburn III or something. But is your name Sumner Sloan? <laughs> yes, it is. Smollett Washburn III leaves her at the bar. Well, why don't you bring your remarkable powers to bear and enlighten me as to what my future holds? Then she takes a job as a waitress. So the first five seasons are very much so about the will they, won't they, can Sam and uh, Diane make it happen? Little ditty about Sam and Diane, two American kids living in Boston land. That song is also very depressing. So in the season five finale, they're gonna get married. They don't get married. Why? Smollett Washburn III comes back and lets her know, Diane, although you're a juvenile, prepubescent, embryonic, terrible writer, your unfinished novel is fantastic and they're going to publish it. And so, apparently, um, married women can't write books or something because she ends up bailing on her wedding to go work on her book for six months or something. I, Or maybe... Oh, this was the 80s. This was before we had paper. Yeah, so she had to go to where the stones were to carve her book on them. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. And so season six opens, Sam has sold the bar to a chain, kind of like a Friday's or something like that. He's nowhere to be seen. We find out from some expository dialogue. Whatever happened to the good old days? Everything was better. Sam still owned the bar, he wasn't out circumnavigating the globe. Yonder sat Diane with a book. Norman Cliff were permanent fixtures in this place. God, how I miss those hail fellows well met. And then all of a sudden, Sam walks in. He's looking for a job because his yacht sank. Um, which is a bummer. I think he said that he sank. Uh, they named the place uh, No Brains at All. <laughs> Very funny, No Brains at All. Uh, folks at CBS, folks at Paramount, whoever owns the rights to Cheers, I am extremely excited and very willing and eager to reboot Cheers with you where I play Sam Malone's illegitimate son, now running that beach bar down there. He's come to retire. My dad, who I kind of want nothing to do with, hanging around my bar. You know, there could be a real kind of a arc there about me being this kind of woke young fella with a dad who wasn't around and like me trying to connect with my dad. My dad is this womanizing old creep because my God is Sam Malone a creep. Anyway, he gets his job back. But how? See, because the thing is, is that Cheers has all the bartenders they need. They have Woody Harrelson. This guy walked in for an audition and they said, we, we uh, actually, uh, I think you, you came to the wrong place, but what's your name? We're going to put you in the show. And so everybody likes Woody. Everybody hates Wayne, the new bartender, who's like a no-nonsense, very serious guy who brags about knowing every drink known to man. Oh, yeah? I say that a customer is going to come into this bar tonight and order a drink you've never heard of. No way, never happened. If it does, will you take a hike? All right. And if I win? Then you get Sam's sailboat. <laughs> deal, Sam? It's a deal. You're on. I stage a whole thing where Norm comes in and orders. What do I feel like today? 
What am I in the mood for? I guess a uh, screaming Viking would do it. What's the matter, Wayne? You heard the man. That drink does not exist. There's been many a morning I wish to God it hadn't. <laughs> I've never heard of that drink, and no one else has either. This gentleman made it up. <laughs> really excellent hospitality there, man. Excuse me, Miss Howe, I can make that. Do you want the cucumber bruised? Slightly. <laughs> and Wayne storms out of the bar, never to return. Sam gets his job back. The hero is saved. What do we know about the Screaming Viking? Well, we know it involves a, a bruised cucumber. That's an important component of it. And it's called a Screaming Viking. That's all we know. Uh, when I think about Vikings, I think about Denmark and Sweden and Norway, you know, obviously Scandinavia. Uh, you got it. That's where the Vikings came from. Screaming Viking, I'm going to think Akvavit. So that's what I'm going to base on. Uh, Akvavit is a traditional spirit from uh, Scandinavia. Tastes like caraway seeds. We're going to go with that. Let's make it. I think this is a really cool drink. I'm very excited to share it with you. So the first thing I want to do is take a cucumber. Um, and I'm just going to cut off the butt. Butt cut. And I'm going to take, um, you know, like five or six thin slices of cucumber. Um, and the cucumber is really going to be ascendant here. We're going to go with a lot of cucumber. I'm going to put that in my glass. And now I want to add um, a half an ounce or as much as three quarters of an ounce simple syrup. Uh, dealer's choice. You can use as much as you like here. I prefer my Screaming Vikings a little bit drier. I'm going with a half an ounce. Bruise my cucumber. Sounds like a euphemism. Tell you, baby, really bruised the old cucumber last night. Uh, not mentioned in the show, but I think an excellent addition in this drink is some mint. I actually think that that's what's going to make this drink really work. You've seen it on the show before, you're going to see it again. This is the thing I use to keep my mint fresh. I love it. It's available for sale on Amazon now. Uh, act, uh, act at your leisure. I think supplies are probably hanging out on that one. But I mean, for me, act right away. I'm going to add in one, two, three, four, ten. Ten mint? You could go more. 11, 12, 13, you know, I think 10 to 15 mint leaves is good here. Uh, I want to add a half an ounce of Aperol. And two ounces of my Aquavit. Uh, and then I'm going to muddle all of that. We're going to shake this drink in our shaker. Ice goes in the shaker. Do a broken one, do a solid one. Um, people ask me sometimes, how are you so good at cracking that ice? Well, first off, I have really good ice. My ice is super dense and I keep it very, very cold and it comes out and immediately gets cracked. So it's extra brittle, that helps. The other thing I would say is that I'm just, I just have a lot of practice at it. Um, and you could get good at it too. Uh, I'll tell you a little secret about ice. It's basically free to make. You need a little bit of water and some cold. You can make it and crack it and you can just stand over your sink. Make a batch of ice, try it out, try it out, try it out, you get better at it. Before we pour that, I'm going to take my glass, and I'm going to take my cucumber, my cucumber, pull some thin slices of cucumber. That's probably about right. And I'm going to use six here. Get yourself a nice sized ice cube, put that in the glass. And then I like to arrange the cucumbers kind of around it. Uh, for the record, you could pour this sort of unstrained and drink it like that, but we're trying to do something a little bit more refined here. Uh, so I would double strain. Lengthen that with a couple of ounces of seltzer. Give it a little bit of a stir to incorporate. 
then I would finish the garnish with some fresh mint. Gently bruise your mint. Some people like to do this when they use a mint on a drink, they like to fan it over the top to make sure that it, the oils really kind of express themselves over the top of it. But we've already muddled mint and everything in here. Um, anyway, a little bouquet. You could drink this with a straw. I think it's better without. Ah, oh, it's a lovely drink. It's very brunchy, it's vegetal. It is easy to drink. It's not very, um, oh, it's such a nice long evolution. Oh, that's wonderful. Let me try this again, one more. I love it. It has such a, um, it's sweet and you get those caraway rye kind of things going on. I mean, that's pretty present, omnipresent. And that's moderated by a little bit of bitterness from the Eperol. There's no citrus in this, which is fine. I think a lime or a lemon juice would probably dominate this drink. It would make it something different. It wouldn't be bad. It would just be a different drink. You could try it with something like that with a half an ounce or an ounce of lime or lemon juice. I don't think it needs it. I think this is a delicious brunch drink, a morning after drink that you can slowly enjoy with your breakfast at your favorite bar, like Cheers. The cucumber is in there. Definitely, you get that cucumber kind of throughout. That's that vegetal aspect of it. Uh, kind of has like a garden and glass vibe in a very, very pleasing way. It it's, looks beautiful and sophisticated and like something Diane would enjoy. If only she weren't in LA writing television series. That's kind of what they do with her character. She becomes a TV writer. It's a wonderful combination of mint and cucumber and caraway. I, I fucking love this drink. I think this is, um, I mean, honestly, I, I made this up because I needed to, because there was a show that said that this drink like this would exist, but I'm very glad I did. Uh, it came out freaking great. Very, very tasty. I like the seltzer. I like it being a little bit of a longer drink, but I could definitely see doing this as something more like a closer to a cocktail. Uh, without the seltzer. It kind of takes it from brunch to uh, evening by dropping the seltzer, right? You seltzer brunch, no brunch, no seltzer, make it an evening drink. Present it a little differently, but the formulation is the same. How to Drink is filmed in front of a live studio audience, and uh, I'm on Twitter at How to Drink, and I'm on Instagram at How to Drink, and I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back on Friday with another episode of the regular show. Uh, and I'll be back early in the following week with another episode like this based on a TV show or a movie or a book or something. Uh, oh, what would be my catchphrase? If I was, if the How to Drink was a three camera sitcom, what would be my catchphrase? What would it be? be? That's my drink. <laughs> that be, um, are you pulling my muddler? <laughs> no, I, I just want to leave you with this. I am available ready, willing, and represented by nobody uh, to take over the reins of Cheers and lead Cheers into the new millennium. I think it's time for uh, a revamp. We gotta act quick because Ted Danson's only getting older. He's gonna croak. So if we're gonna get him in there, we gotta move. We gotta move on this thing, okay? Okay. Uh, see you guys next week on another episode of How to Drink. You wanna go where the people know troubles are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Moving on up to the east side. To a deluxe apartment in the sky. Oh, you know what we got to do? We got to do some All in the Family episodes.